keep it away from the art. <laughs> Sorry about that. Life is far too short to not have fizzy drink. My name is Sean Hillen and I'm an artist and my world changed a year ago when I got a diagnosis that I have a condition called Asperger's. I'm not sure that it affected my work directly. It, it, it probably made me more happy in my own skin and that probably will affect my work. Like I actually decided I'm not going to going to try not to give a fuck about what people think about my work, you know. I knew I had an unusual mind, but I didn't think that I had something diagnosable. I was quoted in recently, Joyce said, show me a normal human being, but he had Asperger's, he had no fucking idea what a normal human being. So, he had, I, so I have no idea, frankly, I've realised, I've actually come to terms with the fact that I have no idea what people think. I have no idea what people make of things. And that's really one of my strengths, you know, the fact that I don't, I never really because I couldn't fathom it, I didn't give my energy to caring. It's one of the interesting things about Asperger's is like it's it's a it's a it's the nature of the mind, which is the nature of the brain. The brain is different apparently, and one of the things that are, is very noticeable about them is they have very poor boundaries. They see categories differently from other people, or they don't see categories. So, for instance, in interpersonal things or business things, I have hard, I would have difficulty and would have difficulty over the years separating business and personal relationships. I don't really understand that. Like the whole thing is a continuum to me. So you can see, kind of see it in my art that, you know, in my, my art is mixing up boundaries and messing about with boundaries. You know, the boundaries are missing. Like I read a brilliant, I read a brilliant review of the Great Pyramids picture and they talked about the multiple boundaries that are kind of transgressed in the picture, you know, the, the sky, the, the, you know, the space meets the sky, meets the mountains, meets the sea, meets the land and loops around again. And they're all kind of messed about with, so it's very hard to discern. You're in the middle of them all at once. And the other thing that is very noticeable in my work is this desire and need to fix the world, this idea that there's something wrong with the world and that I'm obliged to fix it. And I've always been stricken with that. I always felt that the world was completely wrong and that it was kind of obvious to me and that it was my job to fix it by cutting up bits of paper and sticking them together, apparently, you know. The main Asperger website is called wrongplanet.net because you're just born with this feeling that you're on the wrong planet. And for an artist, that's actually a good thing, you see, I think, because you have an outsider's view. You know, at art school, I used to feel sorry for the kind of, you know, we were mostly middle class kids, you know, very bright and lovely, clever and able, talented middle class kids. But they, they had nothing to say, most of them. When I when I arrived at the, at, you know, this LCP, London College of Printing, was the best media school in Britain. And um, I, you know, had been arrested for chucking stones and I didn't know. But when I was at the Slade, my best friend from my teenage years disintegrated himself making a bomb. and. I had all of this anger and need to make work. I want to communicate with my art. That's all I ever wanted to do was engage people. So I was very lucky to have that, to have that motivation. And it, and it was bigger for me than just the conflict, just the North. It was all about everything, you know. And I wanted it to be, I realised it could be funny as well, that it could be beautiful and funny and serious. I found a note to myself from a few years ago saying do something about the negatives because I had these several hundred negatives of photos from the Troubles era that had been taken since I was a teenager and I started taking them more intently when I went to art school and um, in 2011 I was doing a show in the National Library and I happened to show them to the keeper there and she wrote back to me and they took an immediate interest in acquiring them so they, it took a year and a half to scan and retouch these negatives because they'd been 20 years in a carrier bag, literally. It's called Melancholy Witness, which um, I got the line from Heaney. I asked Heaney for some kind of remark on it. And his line was, um, the, the, photos, the photos are like black and white time machines that bring back the desolation of the troubles. But it's, the, but it's the aura of melancholy witness that marks them as the work of Sean Hill.
I took the photos. I, when I was taking those photos, I, I was self-consciously making art, I thought. Or at least, I mean, but I couldn't resist the journalistic impulse, you know. And I couldn't resist an exciting photo. I mean, they're not, you know, I haven't photographed people's ankles, you know, with things, you know, a la art school. So they, they have their journalistic whiff about them. But I did think of them as art, you know, and I, I was taking them kind of for posterity. When when I saw them again, yeah, I was amazed by them. Some of them I'd never seen since I pushed the button. Melancholy Witness, it made people think differently about my work, I think. For one thing, people thought the Troubles collages I was that I was using uh, press photos. They didn't realise that they were my photos. And I at one point I tried to emphasise that, but then I kind of gave up on it. Uh, but, I, but I think it mattered that they were my photos. And it made the whole thing much more intimate and different. So people thought of me differently, actually. And to be frank about it, if I'd done nothing else in my life to do the Melancholy Witness photos would have been, you know, would have been nearly enough. It's kind of wonderful to see that, you know, that Ireland has changed so much and that these things are so distant in, in such a way. Mind you, of course, because I don't live in the North, you know, I'm, I'm well removed from it. But really, one of the, it's people of my generation and a little older who are most affected by them. And, you know, at the National Library Show, people wept every day. and People were really affected by them because it brings up their own memories, which people in the Republic in particular really suppressed. I have to admit that I really enjoyed taking the pictures. And I, and I can't tell you, any, a photographer will know the feeling of having something in the can, you know, in the little can. You know, so when you, when you push the button, like when, and the, you know, you can't plan those photos of a guy running past with a stone. But I did position myself where I knew a guy was going to run by with a stone or come out of a corner. And um, to know that you'd got that or had a very good chance of getting it was a very exciting feeling. And there is an element of hunting to it, you know, of going and chasing a thing. And it's so it's fugitive and it's um, like it's only going to happen once. And... It makes you feel like a bloody photographer, which I have to admit, I really like.